Hello everyone, welcome back to Introduction to Geographic Information Systems. I'm Dr. Heath Robinson. We were just talking about how to determine the size and shape of the planet and why that's so important for geographic information systems. Now we're going to move on to our next topic, which is how do we determine position on the planet? Determining position on the planet is essential for cartography to work, for mapping to work, for all of GIS to work. Basically, all of our geospatial technologies are dependent on our ability to determine a position on the planet and then to communicate that information with somebody else. So the basic system that we use is latitude and longitude for specifying our position. And so that's the system that we're going to talk about in this lecture. But first, I'm going to conduct a bit of a thought experiment with you about how we go about determining position. Okay, so here's the thought experiment that I want to conduct with you. In order to conduct it, I have this white ball. And for the purposes of our thought experiment, I want you to imagine that this is a perfectly homogeneous white ball. So I've got it painted white, but just imagine that it's perfectly homogeneous in every way, and it's white here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this marker, and I'm going to put one black dot on this ball. Okay, so now we've got this perfectly homogeneous ball with one black dot on it. And now the thought experiment is to determine how you can find out exactly where this dot is. I want you to find out a way, I want you to think of a way to specify the exact position of this dot. Where did I put this dot on this ball? What kind of system could I use? If this were the location that I were interested in, how could I specify to you exactly where I put this dot on this perfectly homogeneous ball? Uh, I always ask my students this. Whenever I'm giving this lecture in person in a lecture hall, uh, I always do this and then I ask them, so how can we determine the position of this black dot? So then the students try to provide a variety of answers. Uh, but this is a very challenging problem. I mean, one student said, well, just turn the ball so that the dot is facing straight up and then just tell the person you put the dot at the top of the ball. Uh, but that doesn't work quite so well because that doesn't tell me, uh, did I actually put it on the side? And how do I rotate this so that it's straight up? Uh, how, do I, how do I really specify the location of this dot? It gets more complicated. Let me think about this in a slightly more complicated way because I have a second white ball. So let's say that I have this white ball with just this black dot on it. And then I have a second white ball right here that I give to you or that you give to a friend. And I say, I want you to put the black dot in exactly the same place on this ball that it is on this ball. I want you to tell your friend, how do you put the, the dot in the exact same place? And this is when one student uh, said, okay, well, if the dot is at the top, if you just orient this ball so that it's at the top, just put the dot at the top of this ball and you've got it. Oh, but that doesn't work because I had to change, you know, rotate this ball so that the dot is sitting at the top. Uh, is that ball oriented so that it's exactly oriented like this ball? Or do I need to rotate this so I've got the exact same spot that's up? Uh, this is an extremely difficult problem. And actually, as it turns out, uh, there is no way to do this. There is no way for me to specify where the location of this dot is on this perfectly homogeneous white ball for you precisely to be able to place the dot in the exact same place on this ball. So that is a major theoretical stumbling block for determining position on the planet and for all of cartography, mapping, and geographic information systems. Because if I, if I can only just say, well, hey, this black dot is someplace on, on this, this uh, white ball, then I'm never going to be able to specify position in the way that I need to be able to do so in order to make all of geospatial technologies work. So it's very important for us to come up with a system where I could very precisely tell you exactly where this black dot is so that you could replicate it on your ball. I would also like to point out that it doesn't really help me to put another dot on the ball. Some people say, oh, of course the Earth is not like this ball. It's not perfectly homogeneous. Uh, it's got all different kinds of uh, topographic features uh, on the surface. Can't you just specify uh, that the, uh, a particular location is so-and-so far away from another location? I can replicate that situation a little bit uh, by taking this red marker here 
and I'm going to put another red dot on this ball. So I've got the perfectly homogeneous white ball, but now I've got a black dot and a white dot uh, and a red dot on it. Uh, so yes, I could measure uh, the distance between the red and the black dot now and say, okay, they are, uh, it looks like two centimeters away from each other or something like that. Uh, but that still would not allow me to perfectly place the black and the red dot on this ball. Yes, I would know once I got one of them placed to uh, place the other one a certain distance away, but I need to be able to orient uh, the ball in order to, take the, to put the red dot not only the correct distance away from the black dot, but also in the correct direction from the black dot. It's not just enough to know, hey, two centimeters from the black dot, because two centimeters could be in any direction. And so now we're beginning to come up with a situation where there are lots of different points on this ball, sort of replicating the situation of the Earth a bit more. I could put all different kinds of dots on this ball of all different kinds of colors. I could draw shapes on it. And then I could start to tell you, oh, well, then the, you know, the yellow dot is uh, two and a half centimeters away from the yellow dot. And you start to be able to give some very, very relative positions but you can't specify position precisely in a way that can be replicated from ball to ball. And that's what we need. So if the Earth really were like this homogeneous ball with these dots on it that's just floating out there in space like this, we would have a major problem for all of mapping, cartography, GIS, and all geospatial technologies. But fortunately, the Earth is not like this homogeneous ball in an important respect that doesn't have to do with the fact that there's more stuff on the planet. Because as we just said, that doesn't actually help us. So here is the globe again. Let's take a look at how this globe differs from the homogeneous ball. We can see that the Earth is tilted on its axis, and we'll talk about that with the changing of the seasons uh, in a later lecture. The Earth is tilted, but it's also rotating on this axis. So the Earth is going around in space. Of course, it's revolving around the sun, but it's sitting there rotating. Of course, this is what gives us different days uh, and experiencing daylight and darkness uh, because we're rotating along this axis. So the Earth is not just this ball that's suspended out in space, turning in all directions. It's got this very defined uh, rotation to it and it rotates along this axis. So because we're rotating along this axis, we can start to mathematically establish the axis that the Earth is constantly rotating around, and this becomes very important. So we've got this uh, axis that goes from the North Pole to the South Pole. You can think of a line running through this, and the Earth spins around that. Because the Earth is rotating around that axis, we can also establish a plane that is perpendicular to the axis that runs from the North Pole to the South Pole. You can think of that line running right through the globe that I've got here. And now think of an imaginary plane that I'm going to insert perpendicular, so I'm at a right angle, of course, I'm perpendicular to that axis. And so I've got this plane that passes through uh, the uh, circumference of the Earth at its thickest point that is uh, uh, perpendicular to that axis. When I do that, you can think of that plane intersecting the planet. Okay, so a plane mathematically goes on and on in all directions uh, infinitely. And so it's going to intersect with some place the surface of the Earth. So where the plane that is perpendicular to the axis of rotation of the planet intersects the surface of the Earth, we call that the equator. That's how we get the definition of this equator. That's going to divide the Earth completely in half, Earth rotating around this axis, perpendicular to that axis is a plane, where that plane intersects the surface of the Earth, we have the equator. And this allows us to define one hemisphere of the Earth as the northern hemisphere and another hemisphere of the Earth as the southern hemisphere. And then what we're going to start to do is start to take a measurement about how far north from the equator you are or how far south from the equator you are. And this is going to be the measurement of latitude. Latitude measures how far north or how far south you are from the equator. Please remember what the maximum values for latitude and longitude are. I always ask my class, okay, so what happens uh, when you get to 110 degrees north? 
Oh, well, of course, that's a trick question because there is no 110 degrees north. Keep in mind, the highest latitude you can get to is 90 degrees. So we have 90 degrees north, and then we also have 90 degrees south at the South Pole. Uh, we'll talk about why exactly that is. We'll talk about why 90 degrees is your highest latitude in a moment. So latitude is going to measure north and south of the equator. And this is the very first way that we're going to be able to specify some kind of position on the planet. So let's take a look at, uh, historically, how people were able to find their latitude. Because being able to find latitude has actually been something that people have been able to do even since ancient times. And so we're going to look at how you're able to do that uh, coming up.